Hello and welcome to another segment of Video Ventures, brought to you by the Western DuPage Special Recreation Association. WDSRA provides recreational opportunities for people of all ages with disabilities. Today we're here with one of the WDSRA program's Video Ventures, who all the participants are behind camera and in the control room producing the show today. We also have Tom, one of our participants who's co-hosting the show with me today. I'm going to like to welcome our guests. So we have Allison Niamella from the Batavia Park District, Greg Brueggemann from the City of Elgin Park and Recreation Department, and Katie Drum from the Batavia Park District. So thank you guys for joining us today. Thanks thank for you. having us. Thank you. We are here to talk about IPRA's newest initi initiative called Unplug Illinois. So before we dive into all that stuff, let's take a look at um, their public service announcement to kind of see what this is about. How do you unplug, Illinois? Fun. Fitness. Teamwork. What's your outlet? Support your local park and recreation agency. <laughs> Great. All right, so let's learn a little bit about you before we dive into Unplug Illinois. So can you guys tell us a little bit about yourselves? Allison, go ahead. Sure. I'm the executive director for the Batavia Park District, and I'm actually co-chair of the Unplug Illinois campaign. Um, my other chair is Jared Scheinemann, and he's with the University of Illinois. Okay. And um, we really had the opportunity to hand-choose our team, and um, Great. we were really excited to uh, begin this task force. Um, so this task force is supposed to last for the life of five years. So um, we picked okay. the cream of the crop in the parks and recreation field. Great, great. Greg? Um, Greg Brueggemann, I'm with the city of Elgin. Um, I don't know how I got into this if we're looking at the cream of the crop, but um, <laughs> Come I'm, on now. I'm certainly here and I think um, I was involved, I've been involved with the Illinois Parks and Recreation Association in one form or another um, for probably 16 or 17 years now. Um, and so it's when the opportunity came up, Allison presented it to me and it sounded like a great opportunity. Great, great, thanks for being here. Thanks. Yeah. Um, I'm Katie Drum. Uh, I actually work under Allison at the Batavia Park District. I'm the Director of Marketing and Public Relations. Okay. And uh, actually, just last summer, Allison invited me to join the Marketing Task Force as they, um, the IPRA began to implement the Unplug Illinois campaign. So I was really excited that I got invited, and it's really a really fun experience. Great. Yeah. Great. Well, thanks again for being here. And um, let's hear about Unplug Illinois. We've heard a lot about it, um, as in the therapeutic recreation field of things, I've heard a lot about it. So I'm excited to kind of dive into it and um, see what it's all about. So, what is it? <laughs> the million dollar question. Yes. <laughs> so actually, Unplug Illinois is a public awareness campaign designed to explain to the community uh, the value of parks and recreation. And as you know, value is a very difficult thing to explain to people, especially when they're looking at their tax bill and they see the school sure. district and the library district and the city, they want to know what the park district uh, provides to them. Or in Greg's case, uh, he works for a city, so sure. people wonder, you know, what does the park and recreation department do within the auspices of the city? So really, it, the challenge is to tell our story. Tell the okay. story of parks and recreation, how it impacts the lives of all ages, all individuals, and, um, and really help people become advocates of parks and recreation. Okay, so would that be your ultimate goal then, to ultimately get as many people involved? Our ultimate goal is really, uh, when it comes time for a referendum and the community is looking at the ballot and trying to figure out whether or not they need a rec center for their community, for people to understand the value that uh, a swimming facility brings to them, uh, tennis courts in their local parks, um, forest preserve trails, really what um, what value, how that impacts the community. Okay, great. And how do you plan, Greg, to engage the communities? Um, well, I think Parks and Recreation is really one of those um, agencies or departments in my instance where we go out and we, we try and engage communities. If you 
get a knock on the on your door from the police fire code, chances are it's not good news. Right, if, right. If we come knocking on your door, you know, we're ready to present you with some fun. So engaged communities is really what we're all about. Um, you know, we create uh, rec centers and pools so that they're warm and inviting. Um, you know, we we have for the city of Elgin, we have a youth scholarship fund where we're able to subsidize recreation for families that aren't really um, in a position to pay for recreation. So right. we really want to engage everybody. I mean, we. We have um, SRAs, whether it's uh, Western DuPage or Northwest or Northern Illinois. There's mm -hmm. a, a variety of SRAs. We really want to get all the community involved with our programs. Great. That's a few of the ways. And how do you tend to show um, the healthy aspects of this and getting yeah. that out into the community? Yeah, I think in the past decade we've really seen an increase in obesity in mm -hmm. the United States. And for us, Illinois, or Elgin in Illinois is one of the larger has an old, a larger obese population um, and so we're trying to find ways where we can um, get people in fitness centers or on bike trails or walking parks. Um, we have for the city of Elgin we have a walk with the mayor challenge where we're working on right now that's going to roll out in June and so we really want to take a look at that and it's just mental health. A lot of my uh, water aerobics instructor participants for instance they really this is a quality of life issue for them. It's not just about physical fitness it's about emotional it's about uh, mental um, fitness as well and staying active and the retirees staying engaged with their friends and that's that's all part of a healthy lifestyle. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, what about the sustainability factor yeah. within the communities? Yeah, um, a lot of park districts, a lot of agencies um, go out and they preserve land. You know, Kane County Forest Preserve or mm. uh, Forest Preserve of Cook County. All of those go out and they invest in land so that we can use it for generations to come. Um, we see a lot of uh, nature centers um, getting children educated in nature so that it can be sustained through multiple generations and not just the current generation. So we really go out there and try and get our environmental education there and we try and preserve lands as best as we can. Great, and piggybacking off of that, what about um, the thriving, having your communities thrive? I know that kind of piggybacks on sustainability, but. Yeah, um, you know, for us it's important. I think uh, everyone on this panel is probably involved with um, Parks and Recreation when they're growing up. I know I started as a 15-year-old lifeguard with the city of Elgin, you know, mm -hmm. and so putting money in my pocket and, get in, and having those thriving economies and the thriving communities, you know, we, we spend money in the local community and then that money is invested in um, facilities and parks and, and, and so it, it has a domino effect and not just um, um, environmental, but it's, you know, youth spending money you know we're we're probably one of the largest employers of 15 16 17 year olds out there <laughs> and a lot, not a lot of people think about that yeah. but you know a lot of a lot of those a lot of first time jobs come out and it's it's people that we've trained and, and we were the, probably the largest employer of, of that age group. Sure, mm -hmm. absolutely. Well, thanks for sharing that. I think that's the backbone of what Unplug Illinois is all about. So, um, Katie, can you tell us, is this initiative geared towards a certain population? Um, absolutely not. Um, just to kind of echo what Greg said, um, Parks and Recreation is really geared to everyone, to all ages. So we have programs that we offer to people who are 16 weeks old all the way up to 96 years old. And so um, I think often there's a misconception that uh, park district programs are, are for children. Mm -hmm. um, but we have so many wonderful uh, adult variety programs, senior programs, adult, active adult programs uh, at many agencies across the state. And um, we want to remind people that there's always a wonderful opportunity to learn something new, challenge yourself, engage with your community, volunteer, um, learn something new, get active. And so it's not just for our youth, it's for every generation. And mm -hmm. we want uh, people to remember that and look to park and recreation agencies as a resource. Great, great. Mm -hmm. And thanks for sharing that. I do think that, I do feel a lot of people do feel that it is for children. Um, and I've recently gotten involved back in my park district and enjoying open volleyball and mm -hmm. all those open gyms where I can just drop in. And I feel like that's huge for adults. Um, to kind of get back in and uh, we need to recreate as well, not just our kids. So. Absolutely. One of my right. biggest pet peeves is when people say, oh, I've outgrown the park district. Yeah. Sure. So, you know, my kids are older <laughs> right. now. And I'm like, no, wait, no. we have so much. Yeah. And then just right. to remind people that, you know, hey, you know, we, 
we taught you how to swim, and mm -hmm. you know, we we kept you through uh, the teen center in high school, and then you know, we kept you in shape with all the fitness classes yep. later on in life, right? And our senior club. So we really see everybody from one stage of their life into another. Absolutely, we need to remember to recreate ourselves. I feel like I provide recreation all day and I have to remember to do it myself. Mm -hmm. So everyone out there needs to get out there and enjoy it a little more. So Absolutely. knowing what IPRA does and who it is, you had mentioned that a little bit. Um, why were you inspired to create this initiative and kind of where did it begin? You know, I wish that we, we could take credit for that, but actually it came from the Illinois Park and Recreation Association members. Um, actually back in 2012, uh, Debbie Trueblood, the CEO of IPRA, um, she uh, was working on a new strategic master plan and hired Ann Atkinson, a world-renowned uh, strategic planner. And um, I was actually chairman of IPRA at the time. And we traveled to 14 different regions within the entire state of Illinois oh, and wow. said, what can IPRA do better? What are we missing the boat on? You know, what is there a need for all SRAs, forest preserves, municipalities, park districts, you know, what what is it that we can do to better serve you mm -hmm. as a membership agency? And um, loud and clear, every single region, all 14, said we need to be able to better tell our story. We need to better communicate the value of parks and recreation, what we do day in and day out. We breathe it, we live it, but how do we communicate it? And um, so, uh, IPRA teamed up with the University of Illinois okay. and uh, came up with a transformation kit. That's <laughs> awesome. And it's packed full of a lot of research and uh, statistics. And again, it's all backed from the University of Illinois uh, professors that spent a lot of time on it. And uh, Greg Brueggemann actually was the editor to thread one common voice throughout the entire piece. Um, but really, it was, it was important for us to be able to tell our story. But now we're doing the public launch for Unplug Illinois, and now we need to integrate it into all of our communities. Okay. So, so this is actually at the very beginning of where you are at to get the word out. So yep. Awesome. That's great. Well, we're going to dive into that transformation kit in a little bit. Um, so you had mentioned the University of Illinois is involved. Are there any other groups that this is in cooperation with? Uh, really, the, the biggest partners besides all the member agencies like City of Elgin, Batavia Park District, um, and all of everyone else that's on the task force, it really is a, a marriage between U University of Illinois and IPRA. Okay, that's great. Tom, you have a question? Yes, with all the people that you've said that you're going to help and all the organizations you've started, how are you, how, are you, how were you able to fund this? Great question. I'm glad you asked that. You know what? Uh, funding is always a work in progress, especially when it comes to a lot of work like this. Um, and right now we're actually working on uh, applying for grants. And because this is a feel-good campaign, everybody likes to talk about, you know, how they like to recreate and, you know, whether it's a 5K or, you know, so this mm -hmm. is a feel-good campaign. It should be an emotional sell um, to get a grant. But as you know, the, the well for grants has dried up in Illinois. so. We have to get creative. Absolutely. I understand that. <laughs> How are you spreading the word and getting people involved? I think that's the hot topic because you can, you know, tell us, tell everyone about it, but really how are you going to pull those people in? <clears throat> Well, uh, absolutely, with the transformation kit, that was the first start uh, for this campaign. Is So first, the first step was to really uh, get the buy-in from all of the uh, state's agencies. And so we have a really active communications and marketing uh, network within the state of Illinois. And um, So what does that buy-in look like? How are you going to get them bought into this? Um, well, I think what helps is the, all the wonderful facts that the University of Illinois um, came up with because oftentimes we intuitively know a lot of things but we don't have the facts to back it up sure. and so uh, the kit allows us to really focus in on a certain topic so fitness or um, um, you know sustainability or you know getting people to be more involved or connected to the community and we can okay. use the kit to um, you know, to immediately find reference material. And so, um, you know, I think there's also, again, that mis uh, uh, um, that mis uh, conception. conception, thank you. I'm like, what word am I trying to do? <laughs> um, that, 
you know, that we're just sort of all fun and games at Park and Recreation, sure. but we, um, you know, we're very busy people, and so this allows us to quickly identify uh, different marketing initiatives, and so that's really helpful to professionals in this field. Great. So are you planning on maybe calling up park districts and saying, hey, we have this transformation kit, we'd love to get, get your hands on it, take a look at it, and then run with it? Or is there kind of like a training piece once they get that transformation kit? What does that look like? Um, well, there's a lot of variety there. We uh, we have an active Facebook group where we communicate often there. We share a lot of the information that's within this. We've had presentations at our monthly meetings. Actually, uh, Greg has done a wonderful job at doing some of those presentations. And so really um, communicating what the kit is, what the cam that campaign is, the same way we're informing you today, is uh, really explaining all of the details about what it went to this campaign, how can you use it going forward, um, and then also sharing information about uh, certain districts who are already implementing it, who have already okay. purchased the kit. And so I think hearing everyone's story about how they can use it in a variety of different mediums or ways is really helpful uh, to see how perhaps you could use it in your own district then to communicate okay. the value. Like I was going to say, give me some examples of how people have incorporated it. Sure, uh, like Glencoe Park District um, has actually integrated a lot of the statistics into um, their president of the park board speeches. So there was a grand opening um, for a playground. And um, so they did a ribbon cutting, actually it was an entire park, and did the ribbon cutting and dedication. And he was able to sound you know, right on top of his game um, with every checkpoint that was listed from the Unplugged Illinois kit. Mm -hmm. um, in great. addition, uh, the summer camp staff uh, created Unplug and Play uh, t-shirts. And great. so that was a neat way to integrate even the seasonal staff mm -hmm. into the messaging. Great. What about brochures? Are these displayed throughout any brochures? Or? Yeah, actually we, uh, we have a <coughs> quarterly brochure uh, similar to what most districts do. and. This year we chose our theme, we have an annual theme as Unplug and Play, so we actually incorporated that into our brochure this year. Um, I can show you all an example. Uh, this is our winter brochure. Um, and so what we did is there's a, um, just a plethora of wonderful quotes and facts inside the transformation kit, and we uh, sprinkled those throughout the uh, winter fun guide and we had a contest. We actually hid our mascot throughout the uh, the brochure, hmm. and we invited the public to <laughs> seek and find all 14 spots that his name's Bruce the Spruce. <laughs> um, and where Bruce the Spruce was hiding, we had uh, some um, information from from the campaign. And so this was a really wonderful way uh, for the public to sort of also see that information, but to make it fun, which is at the end of the day, that's what we want for for everyone, we want them to engage and have fun. Sure, sure. So let's talk a little bit more about that transform transformation kit. It's a it's a big book. So what else is really involved in that book? What once someone gets their hands on it, what are they going to be looking at? Yeah, you know, <clears throat> as we went through the the research gathering process, a lot of it was from professional journals, um, a mm -hmm. lot of scientific research that has gone through the um, process of being vetted by professionals and. Um, and so we were trying to find a way that we could create the transformation kit into appropriate kind of um, themes. And it came out that there were four really good themes and they all fit nicely together. And so the transformation kit is split up into those themes and then it gives digestible information. It takes the journals and the, the scientific research that um, leisure studies uh, professors have done and it transforms it into usable information for for most parks and recreation professionals and so instead of you know having some long glossary of um, terms and, mm -hmm. and statistics we've taken and we said okay you know the annual or annually a tree has thirty six thousand dollars worth of oxygen revenue associated with it whereas if you go into a journal you're not going to be able to find that so the transformation kit is really designed as a bridge from academia to the practitioners. 
and the practitioners can then take that information and kind of distribute it and use it on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter or any of the mm -hmm. social media outlets in addition to um, you know I think there's posters associated with it they can oh, use great. throughout their buildings um, they can use it in their uh, fun guides or brochures um, they can use it on t-shirts there's a wide variety of the information that you can you can use and distribute that to your to the public because ultimately the transformation kit is about the public and how we Absolutely. can better serve them you know I would say <coughs> throughout the years each decade there seems to be a different public awareness campaign mm -hmm. so there was a benefits are endless campaign that Walter Payton was actually the celebrity spokesperson for and then that was in the 80s and then the 90s was the possibilities are endless or yeah. <laughs> you know and, and so it's just graduated every okay. decade okay so now I would say we've really been able to find out what, what has and hasn't worked through experience, mm -hmm. through our role models, and telling us what has worked and hasn't worked, um, they've kind of passed the torch on to us. Absolutely. Um, so, you know, ten years from now, hopefully, there'll be different people sitting in this chair right. talking about the new campaign right. that's launched. Right. Right. And that's great. I think the first time when our class had take a, taken a look at Unplug Illinois, the first thing that comes to mind is we're in that generation right now where everyone's focused on electronics. Mm -hmm. They're just plugged in front of that TV, and that's all they want to do. So it's kind of like, yes, unplug get outside, enjoy the community. So I feel like this comes at a perfect time just in regards to everything going on around us. So I love it. So it's kind of cool to hear more about it and the, more. the only way that the only time that we kick ourselves is that we weren't a year earlier when Pokemon was oh, big. Oh my <laughs> word. The unplug and play really yes. would have made sense. Yeah. Yes. Unplug yeah. Illinois. That's a two yes. point. Right. Well, at least they're running around, you know, trying to find Pokemon and, you know. And at least they're in our parks. Yes, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So, Tom, do you have another question? Yeah. With this whole campaign you guys started, are there any po uh, volunteers that need to be implemented in this campaign? Um, absolutely. I think, you know, I, I think one of the ways that we can encourage people to engage with their communities is to volunteer. Uh, there's so many wonderful volunteer opportunities within uh, within. Uh, people's community. Um, they can volunteer for uh, transportation for the elderly. They can volunteer to uh, help out at a special event. They can help to volunteer as an athletic coach. So there's really an opportunity for everyone. Uh, there's opportunities for kids 14 years and older. And so there's a lot of wonderful opportunities always for, uh, for, the, for you to get more engaged in your community through volunteer efforts. Great. Mm -hmm. What do you think the lifespan of Unplug Illinois is going to be? Have you talked about that? We have. Um, you know, it's very philosophical. So it's a great question. Um, but we really hope that the information stays relevant mm -hmm. um, so that it's, everything's current. So we really believe that five years um, is still fresh. But after that, you know, we would have to look to yeah. IPRA for what is the next big thing. Great. So you guys have started this from the beginning, so you jumped in. So what have, what's one thing that you learned that you probably didn't expect along the way or something about Unplug Illinois that's really, you know, stuck with you? I'm stumping you guys. Yes. <laughs> that's a good Is there anything that you've discovered about it so far? <laughs> well, like I said, when we were diving into it, I think the biggest thing that jumped out to me was the electronic piece. I mean, that's spoke loud and clear to me. So, and I did read a lot of that through the different you know, initiatives or you know the the four areas you are touching on. So um, that came out really loud and clear to me. Um, but just, I feel like when you just take these undertakings, there's challenges, there's, you know, different things you, you come upon, so. You know, um, with that being said, and, and thank you for elaborating on that mm -hmm. because you triggered my memory, um, I really think that I was surprised about the, what some people would say is the proven disconnect between what we do and our elected officials. Hmm. You know, even those, whether they're in Springfield or at sure. the federal level, but even at, at the local level to some degree, you know, and how we need to connect them to our community and get them to understand the value of what we do and to keep that information relevant to them. Absolutely. So that way it's not just a special interest, but it's all encompassing and yeah, they can truly appreciate what they have in their own backyard. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I think for me it's two things. I've never been involved with like a statewide campaign. Obviously I've done things locally. Um, but you know, you don't realize how long Illinois is sure, and how on different. a map, right? Yeah. And, and the needs of Batavia might not be the same needs of Carbondale, mm. and it's it really it 
it really enlightened me a little bit more in the whole process. And even if you look at the suburban area, um, just trying to get the word out on such a large project, um, but people just haven't, trying to get them to understand what it is, mm -hmm. trying to advertise it more um, to our, mm -hmm. to our um, co-workers and to the sure. fellow uh, professionals in the field. And then the second thing is um, I'm very analytical, and so when I see people like Katie being able to put together a transformation kit like this, and I'm like, that's beyond any <laughs> skills that I will ever have. And just having an appreciation for all of that design work that went yeah, into it. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Well, and it it's, makes sense why then the three of you were chosen or, or you know, are part of this as you all bring your own strengths to the table. So that's great. Anything else you'd like to add? Yeah, you know, I think for me, uh, a lot of the facts that I learned through the uh, transformation kit um, really blew me away. Uh, one that uh, sticks out is that on average children spend seven and a half hours in front of a screen. And that was pretty staggering. And it actually made me uh, think about uh, my own uh, time in front of a screen. And uh, I really think that park and recreation professionals, I, I see us as role models for the community. And so it really made me think about maybe how I could be making healthier decisions within my own life or with my own family or to encourage my coworkers, encourage my mm -hmm. neighbors, encourage my friends to really embody the, the sort of the, the end goal of this campaign. And so that really made me um, think more about those decisions that, right. that I'm making on a daily basis. Yeah, it's a very good point. I feel like it's just another good reminder um, of getting out there and being involved. And um, I feel like, you know, everyone knows that they have their park district in their backyard or their city in their backyard. So it's just kind of nice to have that new thing up and coming um, that people can go to and be like, oh, what is this? You know, mm -hmm. let's learn more about it. And then they can dive in locally. So we had talked a little bit earlier about some of those goals you are hoping to kind of see from this. So overall, what is the ultimate results that maybe you have seen already or that you hope to see in that near future? Actually, I think we'll have to touch upon hope to see in the near future because okay. we just started, just started our public launch this okay. year. So thank you for having us on your show because yeah. this is a, a huge part of it. Um, but, you know, I would love for people to start volunteering more in their mm -hmm. own communities for SRAs, for park districts, for their cities, mm -hmm. uh, city park and rec departments, um, forest preserves. I think... By volunteering, it shows an expressed interest. You know, it's we know that um, parks and recreation is an elective. It's not mandatory like right. school. It's it's something people opt in to do. So I think that by showing an influx in volunteerism, I think that will show success in this campaign. Great, that's great. Yeah, I think for for me, it's more community based. You know. When, when we think about the towns we grew up in, for me, it was swimming at Lord's Park Family mm -hmm. Aquatic Center. Mm -hmm. It was playing soccer. I want people to look back at their time, whether they're um, looking, a parent looking at their child or a child looking back at their youth and saying, man, but for the City of Elgin Parks and Recreation Department or Batavia Park District, I don't know if I would have had the, the youth or the the childhood that I had. Mm. I want them to think of childhood and have that be synonymous kind of with parks and recreation. Great, great. Yeah, you know, I, I think I, I couldn't agree more with you, Greg, uh, because mm -hmm. I really think it's about um, enriching the lives of our community. And so um, same thing for me. I, when I was growing up, my mom was the, uh, the park, and, uh, park District Aquatic Facility Manager. and. So I had wonderful memories about being at the pool and taking tumbling classes and Absolutely. gymnastics and um, you know growing up we want those for our families too and uh, we want to make memorable experiences. Um, we want to be fulfilled and you know, we're not going to get that by being so plugged in all the time. Yeah, and, absolutely. You know, we have to make a conscious effort to reprioritize our lives, to make time. I think people are very busy and very distracted mm -hmm. these days. And unless, you know, we take ownership over that within our own families, within our own communities, um, it's not going to change. We're not going to start this new trend towards mm -hmm. a healthier lifestyle. And so um, we, you know, we really have to take those first steps and you can do that through your park district. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you. Thank you all for sharing a little bit of that personal side, what it has you know, done for you and what you see for see it. So um, before we wrap things up, let's take one more look at the public service announcement before we go. How do you unplug, Illinois? Adventure! <laughs> 
Tuhan. Fitness. Teamwork. What's your outlet? Support your local park and recreation agency. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you all for being here today and telling us a little bit more about Unplug Illinois. Great job. Thank you. <laughs> so um, once again, just a reminder, get out in your parks, get out in your cities, enjoy what it has out there. Take a look at um, Unplug Illinois. Um, and you can do that on the website at www.unplugillinois.org. Um, so thank you again for joining us for another segment of Video Ventures. We hope to see you next time. You know where we're at Saturday evenings. Have a great night.